Yes, you get that kind of feeling once you are done with the procedure. You get a success in the procedure, but this is not the only thing. You need to know the procedure in totality, whole of it, right? And in this video, I'll cover everything which you need to know about this lumbar puncture procedure. When to perform it, that means indications. When not to perform it, that are the contraindications. Again, very, very important. You need to know when not to go with that. Third, then I'll discuss about whole of the procedure. How to clean, drape, what is the needle, everything I'll talk about and how I perform this, uh, this lumbar puncture procedure. And also, lastly, I'll be covering the complications of this procedure. So keep watching till the end. To go ahead with any kind of procedure, the first important step for you as a doctor would be to take written informed consent from the patient if patient is conscious or from the relative if patient is unconscious explaining the indication of the procedure as well as the complications of the procedure. So starting with the indications first of all. Lumbar puncture can be diagnostic in cases of CNS infection, autoimmune CNS diseases like GBS or CNS vasculitis or even helpful in the conditions like CT negative subarachnoid hemorrhage. Also, it can be used in checking the malignant cells in cases of metastasis. This procedure can be therapeutic in the cases of benign intracranial hypertension or in acute communicating hydrocephalus. Also, it can be useful for the delivery of intrathecal drugs as in case of delivery of antibiotics or antineoplastic drugs. Before going ahead with the procedure, Let's discuss the contraindications. First, infection at the site. Second, patient refusal. Third, increased intracranial pressure. Fourth, coagulopathy. And fifth, cardiopulmonary instability. Talking about the procedure, we need to know the equipments required. First, a sterile set, sterile pair of gloves, lignocaine solution, Betadine, disinfectant, syringe, the containers for the fluid and LP needles. Next step is patient positioning which can be done in lateral position or maybe sitting position depending on the clinical status of the patient. Bend the knees of the patient towards his tummy. Also straighten the back. Correct positioning is very important for you to enter into the subarachnoid space. Otherwise, you might land up doing the procedure again and again. Now, after wearing the sterile gown and the sterile gloves, I'll take chlorhexidine or betadine solution in it. And that too, in a sterile manner, it should not touch the bowl or the container. In the second, I would like to have a skin disinfectant which more commonly I use as AHD, that is a skin disinfectant. After that, I will take the gauze pieces and fit into the sponge holder and clean the area. Next step is cleaning and draping. And before that, just check the site whether it is infected or not. And then you have to have a line imaginary line between the two highest points of iliac crest which corresponds to l4 vertebra right and from there you start cleaning the area now clean the area with a gauze dipped in chlorhexidine or betadine solution and go in a circular manner as shown and you can clean this area with the gauze pieces two to three times i've just shown you only once in this video also, it is better to go below the scapular area and then to the gluteal line. So this is the area you need to go ahead for cleaning. And now I'm draping the area, right? With a, with a circular cut in between. This is a sterile sheet. Now drape the area. Let the chlorhexidine or the betadine act. Right? Till that time, you can have your other things ready. 
Next step is lignocaine or a local anesthetic infiltration. Now I'll take lignocaine into this syringe and that too in a sterile manner. I've taken around five, four to five ml of lignocaine and I'm removing any kind of bubble in the syringe and will attach a needle to this one. And before going ahead, I need to clean the area with a disinfectant. Also, make sure there should be no betadine or a chlorhexidine left in the area because that itself can cause chemical meningitis. So clean the area with a disinfectant as well. Now I will mark the point of entry. My fingers are the highest point of iliac crest and my thumb is pointing at L3 L4 space. Right, so you can go ahead with either L3 L4 space or maybe L4 L5 space. And now I will infiltrate the same site with lignocaine. Initially in the superficial layers and then into the deeper planes. And always remember to aspirate first before injecting in. So this is how and keep on coming out while you infiltrate the area. And this is how I, you give the lignocaine and you can see a very good wheel raised at the site. Now wait for next 45 to 60 seconds till the lignocaine acts. Next, I will take the span needle which is the QB needle or the Quinkies Babcock needle. And the needle which we are using in this case is 22 gauge having a black hub. These are different sizes of spinal needles starting from 18 gauge to 27 gauge. The less the gauge, the more is the bore or the diameter of the needle. As in case 18 gauge has more diameter causing more rent or the hole in the dura which can cause more leakage of the CSF causing more PDPH that is post dural puncture headache. In this case, we are going ahead with black hub needle or the 22 gauge needle as this patient has suspected bacterial meningitis. And in these cases, sometimes the CSF is very thick and it is difficult to get that CSF in maybe 26 or 27 gauge. The bevel should point towards the flank of the patient while going inside in a lateral position. And the direction of needle should be towards the umbilicus. Now before going inside, we need to know the layers pierced by your spinal needle. The first comes the skin, then is subcutaneous layer, and then is the back muscles, then comes supraspinous ligament. After that, there is interspinous ligament. It is not intra, it is interspinous ligament. And then comes the most strongest ligament, which is the ligamentum flavum. And once you pierce that, you get a loss of resistance and that means you are into epidural space. After that, you have a thin dura and once you pierce dura matter, you get CSF dribbling out of your needle. That means you are into subarachnoid space. Now I will go inside piercing all the layers which we just discussed. You can proceed having two hands and very gradually you have to move inside very gradually and then I felt loss of resistance and just, I just checked whether there is CSF from the needle or not and yes again I went inside it was Dura and now you can see CSF coming out yay we did it and now you can collect that CSF in that sterile container and send for the investigations and then this is me standing over there and very happy about the procedure although you can't see the happiness because of the mask now once you have collected the adequate sample put the stellate back into the needle and close the container in a sterile manner Now after putting still it back into the needle, take the needle out as a hole and compress the site for a few seconds. 
also look at the monitor this patient already had the tachycardia because of high grade fever look at heart rate the breathing of the patient as well as the blood pressure and this patient was already on a ventilator now clean the site again and put the dressing over the site and advise the patient to lie supine for next few hours now comes the last part that is complications of this procedure first it is pdph or post dural puncture headache second it can cause blackache third infection fourth epidural or subdural hematoma or abscess formation and lastly it can also cause cerebral herniation